Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, today we're talking about the martial art Aikido. Now I had the pleasure of going and seeing your dojo in Hiroshima, Carolyn and Werner. So thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. It's You're good welcome. to see you. <laughs> Nice to see you. Yeah, even though we're in Hiroshima, I haven't seen you guys. It's been over a year, right? Since I visited the dojo. When was oh, that? Yeah, I think it was cold then too, yeah. So right, it must have yeah. been a year ago. <laughs> and it's snowing a little bit today here. Is it snowing there? Yes, yes but it has not accumulated, unfortunately. <laughs> but the dojo is sufficiently cold, so... <laughs> Yeah. Well, are you continuing the dojo even this time during coronavirus? Yes, we have precautions and special style of practice. Maybe we can mention later, but we are yeah, continuing yeah. all the time. Wonderful. Uh, would you mind just at the beginning, just briefly introducing yourselves? So you're both university professors and you are instructors at the dojo, right? Yes, that's true. So I don't know. Shall I start? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so Go I'm Caroline Funk and I'm from, well, we are both from Germany. I'm professor at Hiroshima University for geography and especially tourism. And for me, Aikido is m a little bit more of a hobby than for Werner, who is doing it more intensively. But I have been practicing now for 36 years and I'm sixth down of Aikido. Yes. My name is Werner Steiners. I'm um, doing Aikido for 40 years and um, I started with 18 actually in Germany before had I did 10 years of Judo. And then I came through the Aikido also to Japan. This was one of the things doing Judo and Aikido. This was why I had always in the childhood the dream to come to Japan. And then um, I'm a historian and archaeologist and through the Aikido also I made connection to Japanese archaeology also and then we decided actually because of this doing together Aikido to come to Japan and have been then switching from place to place and now we are 22 years here in Saijo actually and mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago we established the dojo here. Yeah, I saw that, that I was just reviewing um, your website and it said you established in 2002 so next year uh, so. will be 20 years yes. oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> how many students have have you seen come through the dojo in all that time hundreds I think yeah I think about hundred going through yeah, yeah. but um, these are the hundred registered ones so there is a coming and going as usual actually students coming for three months or half a year and then disappearing and, and so on so maybe 100 150 people so like something like this wow. yeah mm. and what was it that initially attracted you to aikido you were also doing judo you said uh you did different martial arts i know both of you also have training in aido um yeah, but I do. what yeah, I do, yeah. what is it about aikido that you both find really interesting or appealing for, um, for, for me, it was actually because I did as a child semi-professional judo actually and uh, was also in a way going to um, big competitions and with 14 um, in a kind of the typical teenager crisis, I also was bored and also exhausted and stressed from the competition. And so one of my judo teachers suggested me instead of doing judo, I should do Aikido because it didn't have any competition and also he said it's much more about a kind of spiritual and philosophical way as a martial art and this was in a way then um, my decision was made in this time actually um, to switch to Aikido and two years later I, I just stopped doing judo and then also I was always looking then for an Aikido dojo so in a way it was a kind of personal connection and when I started the Aikido I felt immediately this was the thing I wanted to do actually and not in a way like judo is kind of a bodybuilding also kind of very much doping invested also in the 70s the children got actually pills and to enhance their um, uh, skills and so on this was something which I found quite disgusting so it was a kind of um, a better world in the martial arts actually. <laughs> well I hadn't done any martial arts before and I have always kind of disliked any competition sport 
And I started Aikido mainly for self-defense reasons. But then when I started it, I was it was really good for me because I could enjoy the movements and everything without having the pressure of being good at it. So I could move on at my own pace. And what I really like about it is because you always practice with a partner and it's always a different partner, it never gets boring. And it's kind of always something new to discover and about your own body, about other people's movements. And so I found that quite fascinating. Yeah, interesting. And when I was watching it, I think um, you told me that it's balance is really important. And at first, it's very difficult for people to do the moves because it's difficult on one foot. But over mm. time, they can develop a, a good balance. So even though it doesn't look so difficult it looks very fluid and like a dance routine um mm. it is very good physical training right like yes. tell us mm. tell us a little bit about um how you teach or some of the techniques can you mm. Mm. well um our method is a little bit different from traditional Japanese dojos because we are incorporating actually also sports science and in a way a kind of um, training schedule and the so-called individual training. So we are adjusting the training to each person actually because we are a quite small place. And um, so we are trying to find out how could a person develop actually his physical strengths or how could one actually enhance um, abilities and also overcome weaknesses, which is different for everybody. For young people, it's quite easy to to learn very fast. But for people in their 30s, 40s and also 50s, this is getting much more difficult. So the approach is uh, very individualistic and the movements are actually um, um, a spiral. Spiraling movements are the, the main movements, uh, more or less. And so you have uh, the triangle and the circle, which are very, very important, actually. And so that force is always not spinning straight forward. You're trying to spin the force in a kind of spiral way and to, to join the forces of two people, actually, and spiraling. And also then um, trying to um, control aggressive force. It's also Aikido is um, as a principle to control your own aggression and also aggression and the negative energy of um, of other people. And um, it can be very persuasive in a physical way, but also in a way in a kind of spiritual way. But it's really funny sometimes because when we are instructing, I tell people just make a normal movement and it's like, yeah, but normally we don't turn on circles standing on one leg. So what's normal about this? <laughs> so you really have to kind of explain a lot about, but also it's important people just experience the movement. So we try to get a good balance between the traditional way of Japanese teaching, which is just practice, 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 and then you will learn it somehow, but maybe you don't. And the Western type, which would be more of the explanation. So we try to get a good balance of blending this. So don't explain too much, but still let people experience the movements by themselves. And then when they go in the wrong direction, then kind of stop and say, no, try this way. So yeah, and also the Aikido is um, very is is not a static martial art because it's a young martial art coming after the war and is still evolving. So the, the process of evolving um, doesn't stop and evolving means also diversity. There are styles which are much more in a way kind of martial art trying to be effective or styles like ours, who is much more in a way about enhancing your physical abilities and also integrating other um, moving things like also parts from 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 dance or experience from other uh, martial arts, for example. So therefore, um, this is also interesting. It's art. In a way, you can say it's not in a way the purpose of fighting or whatever. It's much more in a way also being creative. And this creativity is also quite interesting and uh, very young martial arts or young uh, movement arts are actually interesting because the process of continuing and enhancing it is actually uh, very interesting and also very dynamic. And interestingly also, depending on the place where are you, where are you or where are the people are coming from, this will obviously also change because of um, culture, uh, also sometimes communication and this kind of things. 
Well, speaking of communication, you are multilingual, right? And you are running the International Dojo. So do you find yourself instructing in many different languages? When I was there, you were instructing in Japanese and English. Um, do you mm. sometimes also instruct in German or other yeah. languages? Right now we have a German student, so we are using German, but normally we use Japanese and English. And because we talk to each other in German, we have to be now really careful because there's somebody who can understand German. So. <laughs> but now we really mix three languages and sometimes it gets a bit confusing. So <laughs> you speak to the wrong people in the wrong language. That's quite interesting. Um, instructing in Japanese is a totally different way than instructing in English because German and English are much more straightforward. And um, so the explanation is also uh, different. When I teach in Japanese, um, you're trying to describe more and the kind of more um, emotional and, and much more about feeling and this kind of thing. So um, it's not so analytic. So it's quite interesting, actually, this for us also is experience that we can switch between the languages. And some people who understand both languages say, oh, we're explaining different things in, in English yeah, and in Japanese, actually. But yes. it's also mm -hmm. fun, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in, and also in Japanese, because some of our teachers have been teaching Japanese, so I pick up their way of explaining. So, for example, I have this had this one teacher in Kobe who had a very simple and clear style of explaining. So sometimes I just follow the style and use it. Whereas in English, we don't have any kind of anybody who taught us in English. So we have to develop our own explanations. Yeah, um, I took uh, karate for a little while in Kyushu, um, but I was really impressed when I visited your dojo that the training was very quiet. There wasn't mm. a lot of loud talking or loud instructions or um, do this, don't do that. Is it uh. the whole <laughs> practice that I observed was very quiet and almost meditative. Like during your warming up time, I, I'm not sure you said anything. There's, mm. That mm. was really interesting. Yeah, so for the warming up, for example, is the Japanese yoga style uh, warming up combined with um, physical training methods uh, from Europe, actually. And so this is something you're coming from a busy environment into the dojo and calm down. So the idea is also the movements are not only for stretching or whatever, it's also cal uh, calming down. And so therefore talking too much is also then you can't get into this rhythm. So the first 20 minutes is to get everybody in the kind of rhythm and uh, being present so therefore in a way a lot of talking would disturb this mm -hmm. this thing so the routines are quite similar all the time so everybody through time is um, connected then to the flow and knows what what is supposed to be done and and, and so on so this is in a way our way of um, engaging with each other in mm -hmm. the beginning actually yeah, and in karate, but also in some Aikido styles, also in Japan, very often you have these shouting of each knee, each knee, and so on. This makes the movements really hard because you kind of move in, a, you make a movement and stop. And so we'd want more fluid and natural movements that doesn't fit with this kind of shouting and counting at all. Yeah, also yeah. I think kindness is very important. Mm. So, um, in a kind of military style uh, martial art training, which is you find in a lot of dojos, also in Europe, also in America, or whatsoever. Um, I think this is creating a, a specific atmosphere. So I think Aikido is about being kind to each other also to some extent. Being through is important, but in a way it's um, not that you using this kind of um, strong voice, for example. Um, uh, authority and respect are coming out of, of different skills, actually. So for the Japanese students, it's always a little bit different because in the student dojo, a lot of shouting and a lot of um, encouraging by the captain. And so this is a common thing. And they have also in a way to um, change their attitude a little bit. But mostly we are teaching people in their 30s, 40s and 50s. So they are for us partners and not in a way a kind of people who are um, obeying us and which it, it's much more in a way that um, we are equals 
the only thing that we are having experience concerning this. This is also a kind of the attitude towards everybody. I think when I visited Carolyn, you were telling me um, the two basic techniques are locks and throws. Can you yes. explain that a little bit? Well, the Aikido has a set of basic movements and some of them, as I said, are throws. So the partner ends up doing a kind of roll, which you call ukemi, and others are locks, which you then stop at the moment when the partner says it hurts. So it, you clap and then the partner, will, the person applying the technique will stop. So, but this is, and actually there are not so many of them. There's like five basic lock techniques and I don't know, the throw techniques is, are a bit expandable, but there's like five or six basic techniques. But then you combine these with different entrance methods like attack methods and different turning methods and so on and that creates a really large variety of techniques um lock techniques is in a way i think better expression is control mm -hmm. techniques so you immobilize the other person through this and demonstrate that um, um, resistance is futile so in mm -hmm. a way this kind um, of idea and the throwing is much more in a way a kind of expressing this key energy which you can't see in a way but through the throw you can get some teachers say um, this is an expression of extending this um, energy actually also mm. and can be for young people very fun because mm. they're yeah. feeling this like surfing like flying so, <laughs> so in a way Surfing is quite interesting because the wave can be very strong and destructive, but if you are very well and smoothly working with the wave, it doesn't um, hurt, but, but you unite actually with the water. So this is a very similar mm. feeling actually. Mm. Yeah, so the throw is more of like let the partner go. Yeah. And the lock is more, okay, I can show the partner I have him or her under control. So is Aikido more of a defensive, like to defend yourself instead of an attack on somebody else? Is that more of the philosophy? Yeah, it's completely, it's not an attacking technique. You do, we have attacks so we can practice, but Aikido as such is a completely defensive technique. It has also these attacks are, some of them are quite ritualistic because um, they're coming from kind of sword attacks. So this is in a way um, a way to demonstrate how energy and can be controlled and attracts can be in control, but has nothing to do with real life situations. Some others like um, you having a punch or something like this. So also we having um, a set of um, uh, very straightforward uh, real life techniques which you could use if you want to, but the goal is not to use it anymore. So that in a way you are able to disperse aggression without moving and without having to attack the partner, for example, or to control the partner. This is, well, this is a kind of philosophical goal. But I can, from my experience, say I was, after starting Aikido, never involved in any fights any longer because you can smell, in a way, this aggression and can react beforehand before this is getting out of hand, actually. So this is something which a lot of people share this experience, actually. And I think it's, it looks very similar, like the using the force of the person who's coming, for example, to use their weak spot, kind of like a lot of self-defense techniques, like the, you would train women um, to use yeah. self-defense techniques. It seems like there's some similarities mm -hmm. there. Is that right? Yeah, but it's not kind of built to be a very, well, there is discussion about how effective it is, but uh, it's not built with the primary aim of effectiveness. It's more built as a kind of body education system. So that's probably the difference. Many of the women defense techniques are really kind of, okay, how can you effectively get out of a bad situation? So they are more realistic. I well, think. but on the other hand, you learn actually to um, handle bodies of other people. You have to always to see an attacker, most of them are not skilled or educated in a kind of combative art. So 90% of people you can, with a lot of experience, Aikido, you can handle because of the technical skills you, you have. And especially also for women, it's building up confidence. So you can move your body in also small spaces. You can um, 
uh, absorb energy and you can feel, okay, now the punch is coming. So this kind of, before the punch is coming, you feel this is coming from this side. So this kind of sensation also is kind of sixth sense is um, trained and this is building up confidence and this is also a, a skill which uh, is a self-defense. This is also very important. It's always this kind of non-verbal communication between the attacker and the attacked actually, which is uh, quite important. So for women as actually Aikido is um, not trying to tell them this is a totally 100% efficient martial art. It's much more um, the martial, this is going to uh, enhance your self-confidence and that you can withstand this kind of conflicts and you can may get find solutions for these conflicts without getting involved in a physical fight, for example. Because you're also, the, the, through the training, your body, you're physically getting stronger, physically stronger, like balance, coordination and all kind of things, actually. So this is for most of the women I mm. experienced, actually, a very important issue. For the men, it's much more about controlling their own aggression and... Um, also in a way that you can with too much force you can hurt the other one so to 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 adjust in a way to a weaker partner actually also the force so there is a totally different set for the women i think and the men concerning also cultural background and um, education and this kind of things and gender obviously this is why we when we're doing this together this yeah, is good interesting <laughs> so because Karen is doing differently Aikido than I do, actually. And for us, as always, we have also uh, doing this so long together. We have always to find, in a way, this this balance again and again. And as a role model, so this is, in a way, the best choice to do. They have um, a, a, woman, um, a female teacher and a male teacher, actually. So this is, in a way, because it's not good to have only women Aikido groups or only male Aikido groups. So in, in this kind of, you have, there, there is conflict between the genders, but we, we're trying to, 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 to work around it. And uh, also we, we confront each other with this conflict. This is, I think, also very important as a message. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, I thought that was so interesting how even if you're different levels, even if you're different abilities, even if you're different physical strength, um, even if your fitness level is very different, you can still practice together in Aikido, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. not really an yeah, important that's part of it. Interesting. Yeah. Right now we have two women in the dojo who are really tiny and it's quite interesting to see. When, uh, th but one of them is really so powerful uh, that she is much stronger than, in, in some of her throws or so than, than the men who are more hold back. Some of them are more stiff, maybe. So it's quite interesting to see, especially now that it's a new kind of situation we have, so small people. So this is also the difference between judo and, and other martial arts. We don't have weight classes. So also we, we don't discriminate against age. So this is the, the task is all the time to adjust um, perfectly actually to the abilities of the other person. So this adjustment, this continuous adjustment is in a way this lifelong learning actually. Also. You, can, you are confronted with people you don't like because of the <laughs> physical appearance or, well, uh, you, you have this kind of negative feelings. And this is also dealing with this. So you're doing Aikido with everybody and trying in a way to overcome this kind of um, thoughts and, and feelings and this kind of things. This is um, also for us as teachers always the challenge that everybody is welcome and we're trying to get along with uh, everybody. This is in a way also, um, especially uh, when you have foreigners and Japanese together in a dojo, you can imagine this kind of conflicts and um, uh, people coming uh, from America are much more outbursting, have outbursting energy. Japanese are much more in a way not showing their feelings so much. And this is also for both sides, also for both cultures, uh, interesting encounter without talking. Mm. So you, you, you're you connecting physically. So this is, then you can also sometimes I say, you can grab into the heart of the other one through through this touching, which you sometimes through all do you, you talk a lot, you can't. So this is also quite interesting that you are um, getting the honest feelings of <laughs> a lot of people actually through practicing together. 
Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, one of the things that that it looks like a dance class, right? Like it looks like people leading each other around in circles and then doing small movements and down they go. And it, it really looks like almost like a waltzing class or something. I was really struck by that. Um, so it's very interesting. Do you take turns? One person is kind of the a attacker and the other is defending. Is that how you do it? Yes, it's you always do take turns four times. So first four, you do four times attacker and then you shift and the other person is four times the attacker. So there is always a shift. So this is the idea of giving and taking. So always it's like black and white. So without giving, there is no taking. And so therefore, in a way, um, you also Aikido, you can't hardly do alone, actually. This is something which is um, also important. But you say, um, it's interesting, you, the impression you were talking about. Uh, well, um, the levels of the practice are different. So the, the floating movements in the beginning are very important that the people getting used to their bodies and getting confidence. So therefore, without resistance. So the one training method is without resistance. The higher the level is getting, we're doing also a lot of stuff with resisting so that you have to get through a wall or barrier, actually. But in the beginning, this is not a good idea because people are getting hard. People should, it's like water. Water can be very strong, but because it's soft, it's so strong, actually. So therefore, to in the beginning, a lot of dance-like movements. Are, this is also our modern method, which is different from the Aikido in the 60s and 70s, actually. So the modern approach is very much that you um, first create and um, a uh, um, comfortable environment for the body and that the body is getting uh, slick and um, elastic, this, this principle of being elastic, which it can be also very strong. And then later on, you can also apply then resistance and brute force and to deal with this. But when you start with this resistance first, then um, a lot of people stiffening up and don't get better mm. also. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting because sometimes it's much more difficult to teach the way of attacking than actually the def defense techniques because if the one person is not attacking because it is a pure defense, nothing will happen. So you have to teach the people that they have to continue attack, not just grab something, but then do something next. So the attacking recently with the people coming in, we had much more problems in teaching them how to attack than to do, do the Yeah, the attacking stuff. is also, the attacking is that the key flow is starting. Mm. This is the energy flow is starting. When there is no energy, there is no Aikido. So when there is no movement, there is no Aikido. And this is also different from other martial arts where the destruction of the other one is the point. And um, so it's non-destructive. In a way, this is um, something which is also has to be taught in the beginning, actually, this principle. Therefore, I am, my idea is to teach Aikido to children is difficult. It's too intellectual. There, there is a big discussion actually going on. But my experience also, I've been teaching children, is teaching children don't understand this kind of principles. But when you're doing judo, it's very, very um, clear cut what you're doing. The other one is resisting, you throw him and you can win or lose. So for children, judo is very easy to grasp. So you have rules, you're fighting according to rules. And for, for children, this is very fun and easy to understand. You're doing Aikido with children, you're ending up doing judo, more or less. This is my experience. So therefore, there is also this kind of intellectual approach or um, thinking about it is also important, which makes it sometimes complicated also for some people. So you, I think when I visited as well, you were talking, I was saying some of the moves look so complicated and, yeah. and you said complicated is good because complicated is really good for your brain. And yeah. before you were talking about uh, passing through a barrier of understanding. So having that kind of mental taxing activity and physical remembering is is really good for elderly people for example yeah. right mm. exactly so this is the point actually modern sports science is coming in they say the more complicated the movements are the more the brain has to um, actively in a way do it other thing is when you're doing the aikido movements you can hardly think of something else this is also very good so you are present in a way 
I always compare to running. Running can be um, very um, can be a nice activity in the nature and so on. But when you're running, you can think about a lot of other things in a way. This is an Aikido not possible. And also sports science says that people who are running, are um, this is good for the heart and the condition and the stamina and so on. But in a way, the brain activity is quite low, actually. And so um, when you're aging, actually, it's uh, much more, for example, people who are doing um, uh, uh, just dance, for example, um, which this is also quite complicated, but this is actually also good for the brain function as a whole. And we discovered also that uh, people um, who thought also in their 40s and 50s they couldn't do this, the ability actually to do this mm -hmm. is growing more and more. So um, therefore, I think also when you are 70 or 80, you can still do it. The point is only that your physical force is getting weaker, but in a way the brain activity and in a way to compensate with brain power actually, uh, and also to use energy in a different way is something you can continue. We have seen people over 80 actually doing Aikido. And this is also for me was always as a child, I think I saw the old man doing Aikido and I thought, wow, when I'm 70, 80, I will do it the same fashion actually. So in normal sports, you are declining all the time. You, you, I can't run any longer this fast and you realize you gain slower and slower this is frustrating in aikido we we realize all the physical force is declining but our abilities are still enhancing actually and this makes it quite fascinating also for people who are aging mm. actually so also age discrimination like in other sports where you have to be ever young mm. this is also, also <laughs> not an issue you can um age with pride <laughs> actually mm. yeah, wonderful um, let's talk about the sticks. There is some sword play or stick movement. Can you yeah. explain that? Well, the techniques in Aikido originally come from sword and stick techniques. And depending on the style, you use it a lot or not. Well, we have been learning styles, so we use them quite a bit. And it comes very helpful now because now we practice only with stick because you don't have to touch each other. So in the Corona technique, actually, the t stick techniques have really saved our practice kind of. So we hold, this, both partners hold the stick. You don't hold the hand directly. Both hold the stick and move with that. And that shows your movements much clearer because you have, how do you call it in English, the, the, the lever? So each small movement with my hands will end up in a much bigger movement at the end of the stick that the partner is holding than if it's just the hand. So it gives you a much clearer idea about how you're moving. This is also in a way doing this sword and um, the jaw, the stick is the jaw movement is, um, this is, has a, is about tradition because originally all the Aikido movements were developed out of this uh, sword and jaw techniques also. And therefore in a way practicing this is in a way you reconnect in, in a way to traditional movements. So this is something uh, which is especially um, normally only done with people who are doing several years because uh, you have to understand the basic principles of moving and then this can enhance in a way the understanding in a much more kind of ritualistic and philosophical way also about timing about the right position to the partner and this kind of things and uh, it also it's getting then more serious and straighter and sharper so we have, to, this is also about concentration. This jaw and sword movements is in a way that your level of concentration is, I think, double than mm. with the normal yeah, movements. Yeah, sure. One mistake means you can also hurt the other one. Yeah. So therefore, in a way, this kind of being totally 100% present. And this is interesting for people doing a long time in a way to uh, explore this kind of things. But a lot of Aikido styles don't do this. This is also evolvement um, that, um, that they're doing only Aikido with um, the, the body without this. But this is about diversity. Our style, we, we, we realized, for me it was being in Germany always a small person. The, the, the sword was in a way um, uh, doing with the sword. The, the physical strength of the other one was not an issue any longer. And it give, gave me a lot of confidence. Also for women, this is mm. quite important in a way because the, the direct confrontation actually with the brute force of the other 
partner is not existing and gives you confidence and then you can enhance your own abilities through this. So this has also something about doing with um, much more spiritual and mental education mm -hmm. doing this. So is the sword, um, I want to say play for some reason, it's not sword play, but is the sword activity, like you said, it's an extension of what you would do with your body. Um, but is it in some way similar to fencing? Are you trying to hit the other sword or hit the other person? Or are you just trying to get contact? I mean, what is the aim of using the Joe? the swords well one thing is there are different types so one mm -hmm. thing as i just mentioned what we do now usually is we do the same techniques as with the hand but one person holds the jaw or this and the other person attacks there so it's still with the hands but then we have other techniques where you have sword against sword or sword against jaw and this is the, and then we have movements alone with the jaw like a kata also so there is all different types of ways of using it. But the difference between the traditional Kobudo actually is the Kobudo is also about destruction and winning. So in a way there is a winner. In the Aikido sword techniques it's about in a way you persuade the other one there's, that there is no opening mm -hmm. and that in a way you never hurt and also never touch the other one actually in a, uh, in a mean way. So um, here again adjustment and also in a way we're trying to bring our different energies to one together so it's like when you're moving with the sword it's like again with the wave and the surfer so therefore always this sometimes the, the partner is the waves other times the partner is the surfer actually so this is continuously switching so we call this kneading the key so it's like making bread so this is in a way then to get these kinds of consistence. And another thing is you can bound with the other one as one. This is also in the sword because the high level of concentration. This is um, for people doing very long, a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. So it's not two persons, it's one person moving together with this kind of energy in a very fast and sharp way. And um, also switching here again, always the sides. So therefore, the Aiki, it's, it's, it's also called Aiki Jo. It's in a way that we harmonize with each other. So it's about harmonization, actually. Traditional martial arts involving um, swords and, and sticks and this kind of things are much more, one will uh, end up as a winner. But also here on a highly philosophical level, it's in a way to learn something about energy and uh, about opponents and in a way um, to discover something which is beyond this. So this is something which is um, in the, for me, especially doing the SWOT, um, mm. very, very interesting thing, especially doing it with advanced students, giving them also in their normal Aikido a totally different sense over time and also age here again. Mm. The older you're getting, the better you're getting in this. So that you can really experience and feel what experience and doing this over a long period of time. Staying calm, for example. As a young person, it's quite difficult to do this because energy is always bursting and trying to get out. But the older you get, you can wait. You can wait and then you just, with low energy, in the right moment, you can get in. And so it's very energy saving <laughs> in a way, actually, also. And, That's really um, interesting. Um, you talk a lot about how Aikido is a very mental practice, but after you've practiced for so long, like both of you have practiced for many years, is it, are you able to lose yourself in it? Like, are you able to practice and not think about it? Or do you always need to think about it while you're doing it? No, the good, the good, the nice time is really when you just get into the flow i mean you know maybe heard know this concept of the perfect flow being getting just the right amount of activity perfect to your own level so if you get onto that flow that is really the nice movement but when you are a teacher it's not so easy to get that because usually you have always in the back of the mind to kind of watch what's going on and so on so even when i'm practicing with somebody i always watch from the side what's happening next to me and I can correct or so. 
So it's much more difficult to get into that flow very easily when you're teaching, I think. Well, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I can experience the flow also when I um, demonstrate with, with yeah, the students. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's it's mm. in a way because the students. It is about trust. Teacher and student is about trust. When the students trust you 100 percent and you, they're giving you the trust. Uh, and in this, in a way, also this kind of flow can come up. Actually, there is no resistance, no inner resistance. Actually, mm -hmm. so it's um, also fun. So the flow is very much fun. So we, we, it's not so serious as you could see in the practice. This is, is there is not this kind of church-like atmosphere at all. So some dojos are extremely serious. So mm -hmm. we we think having fun and that the people also laughing and smiling at each other is also and this is also part of the flow we think so this mm. kind of attitude the kindness coming back to this this idea again and being having an open heart actually so therefore mm, you can really forget about uh, daily sorrows through doing this a lot of people who are doing this for one and a half hour actually all, all the time say later that they just can drop everything for this 90 minutes and so on. This is something which we also both experience, mm. although especially Caroline being very busy, stressful <laughs> uh, day always. Um, this is also you can in a way relax in a very focused way. Yeah. Um, as German teachers, you've taught in Germany, you've taught mm. in Japan, your students are Japanese, your students are international. Mm -hmm. Is there any, and your students might be older than you, is there any strange dynamic in terms of the teacher-student dynamic if you're an international instructor of Aikido? Uh, in Japan? Yeah. Well, we sometimes have people coming to the dojo, mm -hmm. and I mean, they look at the homepage, they should know that there are foreigners instructing Aikido, but sometimes we have these Japanese people come in and you can just feel they cannot accept that. And especially if it's people who have practiced Aikido somewhere else, and then they maybe have moved to Saijo and looking for a new dojo and they come in and they think they are Japanese, they're going to teach us. And that's not the way it's going to be. So sometimes, but it's not, it hasn't happened a lot recently, I think. We it changed a lot. Yeah. It changed a lot. When the foreigners came to Japan, although they were quite experienced, they were always students. This was in the 80s, for example, and also still in the 90s. But in the last two decades, I think this is changing. The people coming to the dojo want to do Aikido and they're looking for a skillful teacher. It's not so much about being Japanese or about race. Mm. They look at the Aikido and say, oh, these guys are good and they, uh, the atmosphere is good and mm. they join. And this kind of questions don't arise any longer. And another thing, this has to do with age. We are both mm. nearly 60 now, meaning that there are not so many people older than us any longer. Mm. When, uh, 20 years ago, this was still um, sometimes a real issue of challenge also, that people try to challenge you because of this. This is not existing any longer. And I don't feel also also in the Japanese Aikido world, not this kind of discrimination no, any it's, longer. It's becoming much more normal, normal to have yeah. in foreigners with the six dan or so. It's still, I mean, with the old people sometimes or so, it's not so easy. There is this kind of underlying discrimination. But a lot of teachers in the Hombu, as in, in, in the center of the Aikido, that we know well, they really accept us as being like Japanese exactly. teachers. So it's, it's really no problem. I'm, um, I'm but, sure it helps that you are certified by the National Association as a yeah. proper dojo, right? So you mm. have the certification. They know mm. that you have passed the standard, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is very important. So with having the strong organization in the back makes things mm. uh, easier. Interesting about when you say about teaching, it's totally different to teach Aikido in Germany than in Japan. Um, German people tend to challenge the teacher intellectually mm. and also in a way de very de much demanding. If you if you fail to live up to these demands, actually, people quitting. 
this is quite interesting also when I'm teaching this is this year not possible or last year wasn't possible because of Corona but normally I teach also two times lengthy in Germany this is also a different challenge um, in a way um, you have to change the methods also in Japan, um, most of the Japanese people and also the foreigners living here are much more, in a way, accepting. Mm. So they just watch and through time, um, in a way, they're adjusting to this. Uh, where therefore, teaching in Germany is much more if you don't uh, fulfill the ambitions concerning this, they quit. And mm. so sometimes you have to be a little bit harsher also concerning this kind of uh, authority. So this is um, always um, quite different environment, especially Germany is um, very outspoken people. So mm. they're directly confronting you with this kind of, and it's much more psychological. A lot of people are doing Aikido in Germany because of a kind of healing. So with coming with issues and want answers to this kind of issues, here it's not the case. People don't come to the dojo. They have underlying issues maybe, but it's not in a way this kind of demand mm of um, a way of healing your uh, psychological issues, for example. So therefore also, again, a diversity in this country. Also Americans, I mean, we introduced, we had uh, encountered an American mm -hmm. recently, quite interesting. Also, he did in a very, very strict dojo in America and a very much, um, and he was totally surprised that he was so relaxed with us here in Japan, actually. Also, yeah. he thought in Japan it would be much more strict. And so he was in the beginning bowing all the time. He said, no, it's not necessary. You don't have to do this just to feel comfortable and just do the Aikido. But then I thought again, OK, American Aikido is much more serious than um, mm. serious in a way that it's um, yeah, you're not supposed to smile or to laugh or something mm. like this, which I think is, is, is sad <laughs> to some extent. But this was interesting to explain somebody who did 13 years, I think, in America, actually, Aikido, mm -hmm. and then coming to us and then um, was more Japanese than... Than we are. <laughs> no, than our dojo. <laughs> <Well, laughs> well, it just, okay. it makes you realize that uh, maybe every dojo is kind of unique. It's maybe not yes. country by country, right? No, um, it's not really depending on the teacher's style. Mm. Yeah, one of, like one of the things. Yeah, even in Japan, you the, you have the dojos where the teachers demand that the younger students wash the dogi of the older ones, and then you have the other dojos where everybody is just really enjoying it and enjoying to practice together. So there's such a variety, and you have the same variety abroad, basically. I think. Yeah. Is Aikido something that you practice on your own? Um, if you can't practice together at the dojo or do you really need to practice with other people? Can you practice as an individual? Yes, you can, but it's of course it's not the same because you don't have this kind of flow and the connection, but you can of course practice the basic movements or so on. And um, um, an important part is actually mental training also for mm. more advanced students that you can imagine in your brain the waza. This is um, uh, you're making neural sports science again, neural connections through this. It's like uh, going uh, downhill, for example. So the, um, the ski people imagine how they're going through uh, the hill actually and what they're going to encounter and do this endlessly. And we're having the same method that I can, uh, after this years, imagine every waza in my brain and see it. And also this is in a way then connected to the real movement. So this is in a way individual training. Also we have breathing training you can obviously do by yourself and all this kind of stretching exercise. And also what we do through Corona now is that we in the beginning now doing sometimes 10, 15 minutes that everybody has to imagine a partner and move without the partner, which I think, although the Corona thing is uh, an issue, but in the end, it is beneficial for all the dojo members because it's enhancing the ability to imagine this kind of imagination and enhancing also um, then the, the, the movement with the partner. So some Aikido schools are very much uh, emphasizing this mental training alone mm -hmm. also. And um, others should say without a partner, there is no Aikido. This is so we have this kind of two extremes actually. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. 
Um, is there any other differences or similarities with other martial arts? For example, it doesn't look like you have a color belt system like no. karate mm. or others. Can you talk mm. about some of the similarities and differences between other martial arts? Well, the grading system, the basic system is similar in that we have Q and done grades, but of course, the way you do the exams and the way you show it, like the color belts or so, that is different. But that's also different within Aikido. In some organizations, they have color belts or so. So, yeah, and then, of course, the contents of the martial arts is very different from karate, where you have the kata, or from judo, where you have the kind of real confrontation and competition. So because it has no competition, but you have a partner that kind of makes it quite special, I think. So for example, you mentioned we are doing Yaido with a sword. That's usually something you do on your own. So it's you don't have the partner. Whereas if you do Judo, then you have the competition. And now even Karate is becoming an Olympic discipline, right? So you have some kind of competition there too. So. But I think the grading system is a historical phenomenon after the war. Mm -hmm. All the martial arts with the doll actually were adjusting to the judo system, which had these kyo grades and this dan grading. So the Aikido also adjusted to this system because this is the kind of um, Japanese people also, the culture likes to have examinations and menkyos <laughs> and this kind of thing. So the Aikido world had no choice. In the old days, the founder was just showing to somebody, you are now first time, you are now second time, so without any exam. So the examination system also developed through time to give it structure. Mm -hmm. So this was also a way of uh, uh, structuring a new martial and creative art. And we looking at the exams and the grading system as a kind of uh, education thing. So you're giving goals, basically. And so it's active learning in a way. Active learning in the way that you have a set of vasas you're actively trying to remember and to exercise. And this gives, in a way, um, the people, especially here in Japan, realize this, um, a, a, a visible ladder actually to um, mm. enhance themselves and also to, people need goals. So in a way, this is also a goal to achieve, actually, to achieve abilities in their own range also. And interesting is about bell, for example, you teach children classes, you have always like um, the colors. For children, colors are very important because they want to uh, mm. compare each other with, so without colors, you couldn't do the grading system. It's not visible. So it's very proud of getting the green one or the black one or whatever. So for us, we call it the barrier actually is the showdown where you're getting the um the trouser the black trouser actually hakama. The hakama. and um so this is a kind of initiation ritual also then you mastered the basic things and this is also with wearing it that your aikido is also changing because of this cloth actually and this is the only thing where you can visibly see that you are switching slowly from a total student position also to a people who is knowledgeable about the system. So this is um, quite important. But in Japan, it was very common that the women got in, got very early with the third queue, for example, a hakama, to give them a kind of advantage. We don't do this because we think this is gender discrimination in a... In a oh, many don't just do it because they think women don't feel comfortable in moving around just with the, with the normal judo trousers, so they give them the hakama. So. No, I... Yeah, no, I heard that from one dojo, actually, okay. that there was yeah, the reason, yeah. so... Yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, so, for example, in foreign countries, getting the hakama is extremely important yeah. ritual. It's really kind of a celebration. In Japan, it's much more because it's going a little bit faster, it's important, but it doesn't have this kind of special thing. But um, in the foreign dojos, this was a very special ritual. I don't know. Actually. We had some members in the dojo who said that that was really their first goal when they started Aikido. They wanted to get the hakama at one point because it really shows how far you got. So yeah. it is important here too, I think. Mm. And it, it kind of looks beautiful, right? When you yeah. do yeah. Aikido in a hakama and yeah. the, the trousers flow as you're moving yeah i can understand the appeal of that yeah yeah so especially among well sorry this is again about women but <laughs> many women some of our women students were saying they were aiming really to get the hakama because it looks so nice so 
but also it's changed your movement um, yeah, it's, in a way. Yeah, it gives you de- heaviness. Heaviness and also it, um, we're having a, a strong gum in the back of our uh, body. And so also it gives you a much more a, a bigger idea of center and being mm-hmm. centered. And also in a way, uh, Aikido is also about aesthetics and beauty. Mm-hmm. So it has a kind of um, beauty in this. Like wearing kimono, you can mm-hmm. say, or what, what, so whatever. So it can enhance also. So it's not only about this kind of inner development, it's also in a way, um, the way you're wearing the hakama and how you can move this. Also movement is changing because it's not so easy to move with hakama yeah. aikido <laughs> in the beginning. So a lot of people are having really trouble mm-hmm. because it's coming in your way actually. But later it's um, really, you can't hardly imagine to do it without mm-hmm. it actually. Mm-hmm. I could imagine. Well, we have about five more minutes left. Um, is there anything as teachers that you would recommend for people who are interested in learning more about Aikido? Uh, like what would be the first step to get started thinking about it? Well, I think the best thing really is to go and try. <laughs> because it's not something, if you look in YouTube, you will find so many different videos from so many different styles. So you will never in real, it's, you might just from the first one you choose by chance, you might get a completely different impression. So really, of course, the dojo that's close by will also have different styles. So, but the best thing really is to try it, try out. If you are interested in it, to find a place and try it out, I think. Another thing is um, you have to make a decision, actually. It's not a sport. This is, I think, very important. It's a moving art with sportive, uh, sportive elements. So this is sometimes a little getting a little bit mixed up, actually. Um, so And also, it's not easy to learn. Mm. But it's the way doing it over time is can be very fun, actually. So um, with young people, we're realizing um, in the last 10 years that the um, level of attention and also that they say, oh, I t- it takes me so many years to do this, is something that it's not appealing any longer so much for young people. This is a quite interesting trend. And a lot of daughters and teachers are very sad about this. I'll say, on the other hand, the people who are starting in their 30s because they are longing for some physical movement and working out, for them, it can be extremely beneficial and they very quickly realize it's good for them mentally, mm. physically and so on. And so also um, the focus of the dojo is much more in people starting in their 30s and 40s and they stay. This is quite mm. interesting because they make a decision. So this is a kind of process. When I started Aikido, everybody was around 18, 20 yeah. or something. Wow, this was a kind well, it of was something new, burst right? of so... energy and we were throwing each other around and... So this was the golden age, we call it, in the 90s. But um, this is also, in a way, I say, okay, um, it's much more now, uh, in a way, um, appealing to people who are older because they can discover something that they, they, they thought, this I can't, I can't achieve any longer. And to teach also um, people who are older is also, for me, very Old, satisfying. Older meaning like 30s instead of 20s. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> So um, mm. I taught recently at the university also Aikido. I could uh, uh, feel that the students were actually interested in it, but nobody continued and didn't have the wish to continue. Although they, they said the feedback was nice, but I think another 10 years, some of the students will start to do it because they are remembering this. I'll say, oh, this is something which um, might be now, the, this is just the right time to start it, actually. Mm. So... That's really interesting that it, it's more of a sport that you should go into thinking that you're going to have to develop your mind more than mm. just get strong and learn the technique. It's much mm. more of a, of a, you need to be a little bit more sophisticated or think of it mm. more philosophically. Is that right? Well, it's a door, right? It's a way. So it's not something you do like running or so. It should. It needs kind of long-term perspective. And uh, yeah. And also, in, we, we say always it's about self-experience, self-discovery, actually, also. This is, in a way, a kind of journey. 
you are starting and people who are doing this on a regular basis then slowly start feeling that the body is changing and the attitude is changing and these kind of things and then you're getting soaked in 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 in, in many ways and in the old days it was much more oh this was fancy and um, kind of exotic and and so whatever so this uh, this change because people can compare much more this is also the internet you see you can easily access now. In the old days, to get a film about old Aikido and everything was quite hard, actually. So there were only rumors. You had to go there and experience this. Now you can take a take a look at it immediately. Yeah. So therefore, so the choices are different now. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful, and it, like you said before, it really helps you develop a sense of confidence. So mm-hmm. as instructors, when you see someone walking around and they look like they have so much confidence, do you wonder? I wonder if they do Aikido. Do you think about that? <laughs> it's quite amazing to see people who think they have confidence in movements and they know about movements and they start Aikido and they just can't do anything. So it's really quite interesting. It, it shows a lot of hidden things in a person's personality versus other people who look don't look so confident once they start moving and they get used to it they become really kind of stabilized and good and confident in it so we really cannot tell from the first impression what kind of aikido these so person will develop also in a way it's not about showing off it's also you touching somebody then you feel the strength mm. this is the point so it's it's a kind of not so um, visible and also uh, doing aikido some people are when they look at both of us, they wouldn't think that we were doing Aikido actually, <laughs> because it doesn't show that much physically. But when we start to move, people say, oh, we didn't expect you to move like this. And this is something also an attitude that you, it's not about showing off in a way, it's um, developing this kind of inner mind and skills, but only when you touch and connect with people, then it's like a flower starting to blossom actually also this is all a kind of philosophical attitude mm. towards this mm. in yeah. other sports showing off is very important fancy clothing um the, the, there is a typical model body which should be developed and, and and so on and we say everybody um in his body all the people are bigger or smaller or whatever uh, this we don't try to change the whole structure of a person if you're doing for example this kind of uh, fancy yoga style they have always this slick instructors so but the old yoga was also that sometimes you're seeing a buddha like instructor but he was extremely skilled in, his, mm-hmm. in what he was uh, doing they didn't try to reform or model the body actually in aikido it's the same mm-hmm. we don't touch this kind of outer appearance actually mm-hmm. Well, if people are interested in Aikido, of course, we should say they should check out our homepage because we do have pictures and we do have some videos on there, right? So uh, looking for Hiroshima International Dojo, uh, you will find some idea about our place. Yeah. So you can find it through gethiroshima.com because we have done your article there. And also uh, if you search Hiroshima International Dojo, you guys come up very quickly. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. That was wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank very you very much, much for having, having us. us. It's always nice to talk about Aikido oh, <laughs> and do wonderful. it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. How much longer are you going to continue? Are you going to teach forever, you think? Until yes, the of end? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, there's you... one very famous state teacher at the Hongu now who is 91. 91. And wow. he's so impressive. So that's our goal. <laughs> yeah, keep keep doing it. That's wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, that's, of course, our last talk of this week. We have a full week next week, so please join us again. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.